When we try to assess the reliability of two historical figures, one of the first questions that comes up is, how much do we really know about them? And the answer to that question will depend on how early our sources are. Our records of Paul's life are much earlier than our records of Muhammad's life. And here I don't just mean that Paul came centuries before Muhammad, and so we have earlier sources for Paul's life. I mean that when we talk about the teachings and deeds of Paul, the biographical sources we use are much closer to the events they report than the biographical sources we use when we talk about the teachings and deeds of Muhammad. Our earliest biographical sources on Paul were written during the lifetime of Paul. The book of Acts was written in the early 60s, before Paul was martyred, and it was written by a traveling companion of Paul, who was an eyewitness to many of the details he reports. We also have numerous letters written by Paul himself. Our earliest detailed biographical source on Muhammad is Ibn Asak's Surat Rasul Allah, which was written more than a century after Muhammad's death. And we don't even have what Ibn Asak actually wrote. We have an abridged version that was sanitized by a later scholar. And we shouldn't forget that many Muslims don't trust Ibn Asak. When Muslims quote stories about Muhammad, they're usually getting their information from sources like Sahih al-Bukhari and Sahih Muslim, which were written two centuries after the time of Muhammad. But it gets worse. The main reason for composing works like Sahih al-Bukhari and Sahih Muslim was that Muslims were composing so many false stories about Muhammad, people didn't know what to believe. Scholars like Bukhari decided that they needed to collect stories they thought were accurate in order to distinguish them from the ever-increasing supply of false narrations. Now, if Muslims during the time of Bukhari were inventing stories about Muhammad, what about the generation before that? and the generation before that, and the generation before that. Two centuries is a lot of time to make things up. That's why it's always good to have sources written within the lifetime of the person you want to know about, or at least within the lifetimes of the eyewitnesses. When we learn about Paul, we learn about him through first-generation eyewitness accounts. When we learn about Muhammad, we learn about him through late sources written by people who didn't know him, whose parents didn't know him, and whose grandparents didn't know him, people who were fishing for historical facts in a sea of fabrication and deception. A few years ago, the crumbling historical foundations for the life of Muhammad led the Islamic scholar Muhammad Sven Kalish to conclude that Muhammad probably never existed. I don't agree with Dr. Kalish's conclusion about Muhammad's existence, but when even Muslim scholars are starting to recognize how difficult it's become to take Muslim sources seriously, our confidence in the historical Muhammad vanishes faster than a Muhammad cartoon posted on Facebook in Pakistan. Hi everyone, thanks for watching. In case you stumbled upon this video while browsing or searching, I wanted to let you know that it's part of a series comparing Paul and Muhammad. So if you'd like to see the full series, be sure to click on the playlist. If you're already in the playlist, you're about to see a pretty big difference between Paul and Muhammad in terms of their intellectual ability.